Okay, so I'm out here in my garage tonight and I'm looking at a little Black & Decker refrigerator and it's a model BCFA27. So here's the tag on it and it has a little schematic and so it's pretty simple. It's just got the AC plug and here's the hot line up here. There's the thermostat inside the fridge. There's a thermal cutout. Here's the compressor and this is a start thermistor that's supposed to apply a high current to the coil closest to the letter D just for the startup and then the run coil is over here next to the ground leg and then this line on the bottom is the neutral or the return line and so let me get the kilowatt out and I'll show you what it's doing alright so I have the kilowatt on amps right now and let me go ahead and plug it in and you can listen to it five point six amps and then we hear the thermal cutout open up and we go back down to zero amps. So the compressor is definitely not starting. So I'm hoping it's just that start thermistor. And I'm hoping I can devise a circuit to just give it a little bit of juice for just a split second to get this thing started. So here's the specs on it right here. Startup amps 6.3. We were getting pretty close to that. We were getting over 5 amps. The normal running amps should be 1.5. And so looking back at the schematic, we know the thermostat's good because the compressor is drawing power. And the C, which is the thermal cutout, which is meant to act on current over 1.5 amps for a long period of time, is opening. So I'm hoping that we just have a bad start thermistor right here. So let's go ahead and open the little box on the side of the compressor and see what's in there. Maybe we can do some ohmmeter tests and try to figure out is that the problem or do we just simply have a seized compressor. So I know the lighting is going to be kind of bad and I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and open this box up right here. I got one side open. Alright, there it is. Open. I just want to get the spring clip off of here. Alright, the clip's off, the box is open. So there is the start thermistor on the side of the compressor. It should actually just unplug from the compressor. There it is right there. And then we'll go ahead and unplug this. This is the thermal cutout right here. Hopefully you can see that. And I know it's working because I heard it click. So the th start thermistor, let's go ahead and remove the lead from it. There we go. Does not sound good broken up inside. Okay, so let's see if we can get some kind of an ohm reading on this. 0.6 and 27k 400k? That cannot be good. Well, I wonder if we can get this open and see what's inside. So, I can tell you that the lead right here passes straight through and then there should be a thermistor between here and here. Yeah, I think it's toast. There's the thermistor disc inside. And it's definitely broken. Let's see if I can pull it out of here. Oh, yeah, it's broken into a lot of little pieces. Well, there's your problem. Thermistor's all used up. Let's see if we can get an ohm reading on what's left of the thermistor. So I'll read from this side over to a good portion here. And we read 11 ohms. So that's probably about a third of it. And I see 4R7 on here, so it should be a 4.7 ohm cold thermistor. And it should increasingly get higher in resistance as it warms up. So you can see all the pieces there. And there's the other tab that we actually connect our lead to. It passes straight through. So, I think it might be a straightforward repair. So here's the part number that's on it. QP2-4.7. 
which tells me it should be a 4.7 ohm thermistor. Okay, so here's what I think might work. So I'm going to set these down to about a third of a second. So this is in point tenths of a second, so three tenths of a second. So this is an Omeron timer, and it basically has the capability of counting tenths of seconds, seconds, tenths of minutes, minutes, tenths of hours, or hours. And some repeat, so 10 hours, so that would be 30 hours. But I want tenths of seconds. And so I've connected it to this relay right here, this 120 volt relay. And I did go ahead and add a spike suppressor across the coil to protect the small relay in the Omeron timer. All right, so this should be plug and play once everything is good. So the black lead right here is gonna be the hot lead. So this lead is going to connect from the existing hot from the thermostat. It's going to go through the thermal overload. And then this is going to go to the input of the compressor, the hot side of the compressor. And it's going to feed my timer. And so my timer is going to count three tenths of a second before it pulls in this relay. And before it pulls in this relay, it's going to feed these two neutral leads the same energy. And so I'm going to supply the existing neutral to this lead and then this this one will go to the run side of the compressor and then this lead will go to the start side of the compressor so let's go ahead and put it in and see if it works okay so I've got the parts just laying here I have not connected the neutral start or the neutral return to the compressor yet but I do have it connected up to my kilowatt over here and I've got a power switch on that that I can turn on so I'm going to switch on the power switch and watch between the time I switch the power switch on to the time you see the relay move. So it's about a third of a second. That should be enough to start the compressor. Let's see if it's going to work. Alright, so I've got everything kind of cobbled up in here. Nothing's touching anything. The only live part I have exposed is right here the thermal overload and I'll probably wrap that with tape just to be safe. So, here we go. And it's running. Here's the amp reading, if you can see that. 1.25 amps. It's running good. Let's wipe that off so you can see it. Now it's down to 1.23 amps. So all we had to do was supply power to the compressor on the start side for about a third of a second until we could get the compressor up and spinning. So I hear it running. Let's see if we're getting any temperature change. Oh, yeah, we're getting some cool over here on the suction side. And the high side is definitely getting warm. We're generating heat. All right, so sorry about the flicker. I'm just using a little LED flashlight, the one I made the uh, video on. Uh, anyhow, I've got my kilowatt set up, so let's go ahead and turn the fridge on. And it's on, it's running. So let's go ahead and make sure I've reset the cost. So we're running 1.31 amps right now. So total cost for year would be $190 at this point. And so we'll come back tomorrow and see what that says. And that's at 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, this thing actually tells you my elapsed time is zero. So my total cost so far is zero. So um, per hour would be two cents at this point. Uh, once again, rate is 20 cents per kilowatt hour. I've used zero kilowatt hours, so let's go ahead and let this run overnight, and we'll see what it says in the morning. I have it running. It's been running for about 10 or 15 minutes now. And I do have a thermometer in here, and it's down to 46.9 degrees at this point. So we'll go ahead and check this in the morning and see what it says. Okay, so currently the refrigerator is satisfied. It's not on. It should be down to temperature at this point. In fact, I think it tells us how long it's been running. 13 hours and 17 minutes. So let's look at the amount of energy used in that amount of time. So I've used 11 cents of energy in 13 hours. 
Um, and that includes um, the initial cooldown to get it to the satisfied state. So it tells me that in one day I would use 20 cents, in one week $1.41, one month $6.04, and in one year $73.58. And once again that is at 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Your rates may vary. So it's telling me I've used 0.56 kilowatt hours total. Oh, there it just kicked back on. So we're at 1.21 amps right now. 1.23. And so let's go ahead and open the fridge up. Let's look at the temperature. So currently we are at 26.2 degrees. It was 26.1. And as the warm air rushed in there, it's going up 26.4. So I'd say it's working absolutely perfectly. It's very happy. It's satisfied. And yeah, successful repair uh, with parts on hand. I just happened to have the uh, Omron timer and the relay to get this job done successfully. I did go ahead and set the initial time to two-tenths of a second. It started good at three-tenths. I even tried it with one-tenth of a second and it barely started so I went ahead and made it two tenths. It's starting quite reliably at this point. All right, so it has probably been a month since I did the repair on this little Black & Decker refrigerator. I have it out here in my garage and I have a fan set up next to it to cool the condenser because it's on the outside of the cavity and I do have a small chest freezer next to it. Anyhow, it's been running. I've got stuff in it. Let's take a peek. Look at that, I've got some butter and another thermometer. We're sitting at about 35 degrees right now. Some cheese down here. Bottle of wine. So this is mainly my butter and cheese and a bottle of wine refrigerator at this point. Anyhow, working good. I got nothing in the freezer because it really doesn't freeze. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on the repair of the Black & Decker mini fridge with the parts that I had in stock. Please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really helps my channel grow. I do appreciate your comments, your concerns, your questions. Go ahead and leave me a question. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. You can also contact me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at NorCal715, and also email NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.